So, here's how to build the trickle charger. Uh, just a few components. Uh, a lot of these will depend on how many of these battery holders I can put on the board. Uh, it's a simple circuit. Just have to keep repeating this part after the first stage. Uh, I found this actually on uh, his website. Uh, so if you want to look up the original version, go to his site. Uh, he does good work. And all of that will get put onto this board here. It's a fairly old board I've got. Uh, Single-sided, the holes are not through uh, plated, and it's about time to use it. I've got lots of battery holders, LEDs, resistors, diodes, and the whole reason I'm doing this is uh, go to whatever time I put up in here uh, because I've been having a few issues with these, uh, oh, there we go, power owl. owl. And uh, when you get to that time, you'll see what I'm talking about. So, on to building. And I won't bore you with each stage, I'll just click occasionally. So the first part to go on is this USB uh, B type, I believe it is, uh, female. Uh, but I don't want it standing off the board, so I'm just going to pull off uh, this part of the header and then just flush mount it. And now add the power indicating LED and its limiting resistor. Uh, I think I'm using a 1000 ohm resistor because don't need it that bright. And I'll connect up all the grounds and power lines uh, more towards the end. Okay, made a couple modifications. I've added uh, pins here. I'll use proper connectors later. Uh, added pins here because um, soldering to this board's been a pain, even though I did scrub the back. The board's probably over 20 years old, yeah, maybe 30. Uh, so this way I'll just have these loose for the time being, and I'll probably just either epoxy, or if I pick up some hardware, I'll mount them properly. So let's see if this thing works with just one leg on it. Ah, it's indicating power on. And here's my battery. It's be charged. And it indicates charging. I did a breadboard uh, version of this and it indicates it's charging at about 37 milliamps. So that's not too bad. On to the next one. Yeah, installed the second one. And also put the power rail all the way across. So now I just, when they come through it's easier to solder. Next. So, got all the components on now, other than the battery holders, and that's what the back looks like. Repetitive, repetitive, and repetitive. Now I'll hook up some battery uh, packs. Okay, yeah, it's all connected now. I'm just running it off a power bank uh, for convenience. There's 10 batteries uh, hooked up and they're all charging by the looks of it. I've got a little meter on here. It says I'm putting in 0 0.32 amps. I figured about 35 milliamps per battery, but they could be at different levels of charge. So that's not too bad. Uh, what I've been doing, though, is I've been testing uh, these um, Power Owl, Owl, whatever, Power, yeah, Power Owl batteries. They're supposed to be able to hold their charge for long times, but um, something that I got immediately after I bought them was a message from the seller saying that they're shipped uh, mostly discharged, you have to charge them up, and that there's... Um, 
a cycling you have to go through before they actually reach full capacity. Let me just grab my sheet. So I had four, pulled out four of these and charged them. Uh, one, number two is over there, it's on the discharge circuit, three and four. Number one battery actually, uh, even though it indicated fully charged on um, my Duracell charger, uh, which is designed for nickel uh, metal hydrite, uh, it stopped within five minutes, even though it's supposed to be fully discharged. The number two battery had a whopping 0.218 amp hours on it. And these are supposed to be uh, 2800, I believe. Yeah, 2800 milliamp hours. So that wasn't even close. Number three battery actually was pretty good. It was 1.95 uh, amp hours. Number four was 1.05 amp hours. So then I went through where I recharged them. Number one went actually up to one, roughly one amp hour. Number two, 0.7 of an amp hour. Don't ask me what. Yeah, 0.7 of an amp hour. Number three went up to 2.1 uh, amp hours. And number four went up to number two amp hours. Uh, next cycling, number one, which has actually been doing pretty poorly, was up to two amp hours. So it appears that the manufacturer, of course, doesn't tell you this before they sell them to you, but you do have to cycle these batteries. And most, uh, most of these ones here are on their third cycle. And I'm hoping that the trickle charge brings them up uh, even higher. So, kind of interesting. And I was using this... Uh, easier to move the camera. That there for doing the calculating how many uh, amp hours each battery is holding. So I'm going to let this run for a while and uh, see how it goes. But since the batteries were all improving uh, fairly quickly, yeah, looks like their product's good. They just don't tell you that uh, to start off that uh, you have to cycle them. They wait till you buy it. <laughs> oh well. Have a good Thanksgiving. <laughs> Bye. And what's on the menu for today? Pork loin. Slow cooked three hours at 250 Fahrenheit with mushrooms, onions, a bit of Worcestershire sauce, a bit of soy sauce, uh, curry powder, and paprika. And I think I mentioned onions. Uh, should be tasty.